Welcome to Anvil Survival. And today, I'm gonna to teach you how to build a compass. I wanna ask you, what do all these items have in common? Three things. Number one, they're all from my survival pack. Number two, they're all magnets. And number three, they can all be used as compass needles. First, some basics on magnetism. I'm gonna give you three things to remember. They're all simple. First, opposites attract. But the same poles, for example, two norths or two souths, they repel one another. All magnets have two poles, a north and a south. It could be marked as a positive or a negative. Yeah, I've even seen them painted red in another color, uh, but red seems to be the standard for a north pole. Think of the earth as one giant magnet. So thinking of the earth as one giant magnet, the magnetic field lines come out of the north pole and then they wrap them around the magnet, in this case, the globe, and then they enter back into the south pole. And since the Earth is a giant magnet, and the compass is a magnet as well, they act as we learned before, that opposite poles are attracted to one another. Now this part can be a little confusing, because the North Pole, geographically, is actually the South Magnetic Pole of the Earth. And when we think about North, we need to remember that there are three types of Norths. There's a true North, which is a line through the North Pole, a magnetic North, which is the direction to the North Magnetic Pole, and then there's a grid north, which we won't be covering today, but it's established on a map. You also need to be aware of magnetic declination or variation, which is the difference between magnetic north and true north. It depends on where you're at in the world. It could just be a degree or two, or it could be a lot more substantial. Either way, you'll need to account for this. The magnet's not marked. How do I know what pole is which, south or north? I'm gonna give you three methods to determine the polarity of a magnet, the compass method, which I don't recommend you use your cell phone for, the float method, and the string method. Okay, so we've got our compass on a flat surface and it's pointed north. The magnet's south pole will attract the compass's red needle. If we flip this around, the magnet's north pole will attract the compass's black needle. Remember, a compass is telling us the direction of the magnetic field. And now here's our float method. If your magnet's small enough, you can adhere it to a piece of foam or something like that that floats. So let's see what happens. What end points north and which end points south? What we should see is, just like with the string method, the north end will point north. And as you can see looking at the compass, they're both pointing north. Here's a string method. Go ahead and tie a string around your magnet and suspend it in midair. Uh, I like to use a stick, it can be whatever. For the string method, we've got our compass pointed north. We went ahead and dropped the magnet from the string and suspended it. When it finally settles, the north end of the magnet will be pointing north. The south end, in blue, will be pointed south. Now that you know the polarity of your magnet, go ahead and mark it appropriately. So once you've got your object and you've identified the polarity of your magnet, now it's time to magnetize the object. Go ahead and place the object you want to magnetize where the sharp end is on the negative pole of the magnet. This will cause the sharp end to point north when it's floated. Now you don't have to do it exactly this way. You can, you can flip the polarities, but you need to be consistent and you need to know which, which method is gonna point north for you. For me, I like the idea that the sharp end points because it makes sense, but you can do whatever, whatever works for you. Once you've attached it to the magnet, go ahead and set it aside and let physics do its work. It's gonna help if you've got a strong magnet and a straight item. After we've magnetized our needle, we need to go ahead and make a float. Here I've got a milk jug top. I'll put a small razor hole, um, just enough to hold the, the needle. If you don't have this, it's okay. Okay, so once we've magnetized our object, next we need to float it. Here I've got the top of a milk jug, but you can use whatever you can find available to you that'll suspend the object. It could be a leaf or a piece of foam. Just use your imagination. You can also hang the object with a piece of string if water is unavailable. This is a weak compass, and it's vulnerable to things like wind and water movement, and so what you want to do is keep it isolated from those items. If you need to, another idea is you can put this in a jar of liquid all right, our needle has stopped moving. It's parallel with the compass, and the compass is pointed north, so now we know our direction with an everyday object. 
I hope this video was informative and you learned something out of it. Um, again, we can find direction with just some basic things that we probably already have in our pack. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, give us some likes, and leave some comments down below. Thank you.